the sea lion, Rear Admiral Kirpal Singh. Six lessons from a life of adventure, courage, and inspiration. Our fate cannot be taken from us. It is a gift. Across the ages, our best love stories are tales of adventure and the heroic deeds of courageous men and women, or stories that have many twists and turns, proving that truth is indeed stranger than fiction, or stories of love, of tragedy, and of rebirth. But the most inspiring stories the ones that stay in our minds for a long, long time after we first hear them are stories that are all of the above. This is one of them. The story of a man who lived a life of adventure, courage and inspiration. A man who faced extreme danger and dreamed of trying to help build his country. A man whose life story was scripted against the larger canvas of history. A man called Kirpal Singh, who is 93 years old today. Today, you will hear his story. You will get a glimpse of what made young Kirpal the indomitable sea lion. Kirpal was born in 1925 in Ajmer. His father, Pratap Singh, was an opium trading police sub-inspector. It was a time when the British Raj created a vast opium empire in India that earned nearly five million pounds sterling in 1922, almost 300 million pounds today. Gertrude Marvin Williams, an American journalist, visited British-owned textile mills in Bombay. She wrote that 90% of the babies were kept constantly drugged with opium so that their mothers could work longer hours. One day in 1932, Pratap Singh refused to cover up for the police officers who secretly made money from the poppy seeds that they were paid to export to China. His supervisors rewarded his honesty by forcing him out of the police service on account of his poor health. Now unemployed, Pratap moved his family, including seven-year-old Kirpal, to Rawalpindi, close to his ancestral village of Basali. Pratap lived for another 51 years in good health and indeed with a good conscience. But finding the means to educate his nine children on his small pension was Pratap Singh's primary goal. That explains why the first house he bought in Rawalpindi was located near an open sewer. You see, the very best schools and colleges were located just a stone's throw away. Pratap tutored his children himself in four languages, knowing that all he could offer them was an education. He encouraged me to sit for an examination in English which I did from Khalsa School, Rawalpindi. Examination called Anglo Vernacular Middle Final Exam, for which I had to go to Lahore from Rawalpindi. He knew that one day, before they were even fully grown, he would have to push them to step out into the world to make a life for themselves which is precisely what they did. Kirpal's elder sister, Narinda, earned a gold medal in botany at Gordon College in Rawalpindi. He shared the closest family bond with her. 
on icy cold mornings with few winter clothes on his five-mile walk to school, Kirpal dreamed of a life of adventure. His school friends called him Nambardar for his talent with math. And though they counted pennies at home, Pratap and his wife Lajwanti volunteered at the local Gudwara. Neighbors said their simple home was filled with the sounds of laughter. Lesson 1. Individuals who live by high ethical codes can enjoy one of the greatest of human gifts, the trust of others. On my honor, I promise that I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country, to help other people at all times. The Dufferin Oath of Allegiance. In 1941, at age 14, Kirpal left home for Bombay when he was offered admission to the Dufferin training ship. It was the first time he ever saw the sea. Here, he had followed in the footsteps of his hero, Horatio Nelson, who joined the Navy at the same age. At the age of 13, I appeared for the examination to join the Indian Mercantile Marine Training Ship Dufferin which actually trained cadets for the Merchant Navy. Suddenly, he was thrown into a whirlpool of conflict. Conflict on the training ship Dufferin, where discipline was harsh and competition was fierce among the 300 cadets. Faced with frequent remarks from his British headmaster, that you Indians cannot do this, Kirpal was determined to prove him wrong. Conflict on the streets of Bombay, where he and his friends felt elation at Gandhi's call for the British to quit India and allow the country to be independent. Conflict with flames and fury as the Second World War burst on India's eastern coast. The Japanese occupied the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. They began bombing ships and homes in Calcutta, facing heavy losses of lives on their ships. As many as 4,000 people died on the converted troop ship Lancastria, the British had begun to recruit Indians to support the war at sea. Two and a half million people from the subcontinent joined the Allies in their fight for freedom. Through it all, Kirpal kept his goal in sight. He graduated with an extra first class from the Dufferin and the Royal Navy offered him a scholarship to train as an engineer in England. But to their amazement, he politely refused their offer. Sir, he said, if I became an engineer and gave up the executive branch, I could never reach the highest rank and command a ship. Soon, he was offered a position at the Royal Naval College in Dartmouth as an executive officer. Lesson two, aim as high as you can. Be willing to sacrifice short-term gains as you focus on achieving your goals. And when the last days of my life come, may I die in the might of the battlefield. De Shiva, Guru Gobind Singh. How would Kirpal afford the passage by sea to England? Father was determined and he said he would sell the house in order to raise the money and go and live in a rented place. At that time, my brothers came forward 
put together the money that was needed and I was able to go to England for my training. This was something I was conscious of throughout the period I was under training with the Royal Navy. And while others at the end of the war were busy visiting France and Switzerland on holiday, I stayed put, taking advantage of the hospitality offered by British families and saved as much money as I could and had the satisfaction that on my return to India I was able to hand over a check for 250 pounds to my father who settled his debt with his two elder sons. Now Kirpal wasn't the only member of the clan to have travelled far. His great uncles Dalit and Bhag Singh had already travelled to Australia and England before him, while his uncles Kartar moved to East Africa and Jod Singh saw action in the First World War in France. In England, Kirpal found a very different attitude among the British. He worked hard and got first-class certificates in all aspects of his training, from seamanship and navigation to gunnery, torpedo and signals. What was it about this lanky, six-foot-tall young man that drew people to him? Soon after Kirpal arrived in England in 1944, a chance meeting with Hilary Bell of the Victoria League led him to being befriended by her entire family. Hillary's father, Lieutenant Colonel Robert Roylands, was the chairman of Lloyd's of London. Why did the Admiral of the Fleet, Bruce Fraser, single Kirpal out among all the Royal Navy officers serving at Scarpa Flow the main naval base near the Arctic Ocean during World War II. In May 1944, when King George VI visited Scarpa Flow, a single shot was fired from the musket. The commander-in-chief raised his cap and called for three cheers for the king. His Majesty had a 19-year-old Sikh escort, Kirpal Singh. With great affection, Fraser called him the turbaned rascal. For all these ceremonial moments, war tested him dearly. Kirpal faced the brutal challenge of surviving one of the coldest Arctic winters on board HMS Anson. On an open deck, surrounded by darkness and treacherous icebergs, his hair and beard were frozen to a crisp. Every man was more frightened than he had ever been before. Frostbite was common. Their chances of survival were slim. Next, Kirpal followed Admiral Fraser to the British Pacific Fleet to fight the Imperial Japanese Navy. On board HMS King George V, he narrowly escaped kamikaze attacks less than a hundred feet away. When fighting at sea, he said later, your duties are scorched into your psyche. You don't think of the danger to you. You think of how to achieve your goal to protect others. Kirpal Singh came home to an independent India with honors and a sense of responsibility. He was part of the hand-picked team 
that brought India's first ship, INS Delhi, from the UK. In 1948, he was chosen as an aide to Raja Gopalachari, the first Indian Governor General of our country. Kirpal observed that Pandit Nehru and Sadar Patel frequently turned to Rajaji as he had a knack for breaking complicated issues into simple terms to help resolve differences between people. Until the very end of each of their lives, Kirpal kept in close touch with Hilary Bell, Admiral Fraser, and Rajaji. Lesson 3. Your mentors help shape a spark inside you that made you stand out. When they are older and frail, you can return their kindness and care for them. Jalem Jesya Valem Tesya He who rules the sea is all-powerful. Admiral Tukoji Angre The most important attribute in a late naval officer is leadership. So while doing well professionally, please keep this in mind. And I have tried to keep that in mind throughout my not only naval career, but subsequently as well. It was a tumultuous time of transition for India. The British Admiralty, on Prime Minister Harold Wilson's instructions, refused to offer India any battle-class destroyers or submarines. At a reception for the Indian delegation, Kirpal Singh urged an old friend and mentor to help out. It was none other than the former First Sea Lord, Bruce Fraser. Fraser convinced Admiral Sir John David Luce to offer India the Leander-class frigate design and also to set up a partnership with Babcock and Wickers Armstrong to build warships in India. The heyday of the Wadia shipbuilders in Bombay was no more and it was vital to set up new capabilities with fresh talent. Mazagon docks needed trained naval officers and dock workers. With the new agreement in place, promising recruits were sent to England for training. When Kirpal took over as the Indian Navy's chief of personnel, he recruited marine and electrical engineers as well as naval architects from the then newly established Indian Institutes of Technology. It was his initiative and foresight that led to the inauguration of the Naval Academy near Cochin, where personnel were trained in the complex art of managing submarines. You see, like his father before him, Kirpal was acutely aware of the importance of learning, of being trained with the best skills required for the job at hand, of empowering through self-reliance and responsibility. Thanks to contributions like Kirpal Singh's and others, the Indian Navy was able to begin to build its own nuclear submarines, a far cry from the days of relying on used British ships. Lesson 4. India is the only country with an ocean named after it. Explore the world with an open mind. Bring back the best knowledge that you find elsewhere to build your country. The way he dressed, the way he conducted himself, the way he spoke, uh, it was very much an officer, you could, you could see, from the way he spoke, the way he dealt with people. Uh, and uh, uh, there was no doubt in my mind that this was a, certainly an upcoming man and would be a very good person to serve with one day. In 1952, the young officer fell in love 
and married Manji, the lovely and gifted daughter of Uttam Singh Dugal. Her father, a reputed entrepreneur who built some of the country's earliest steel mills and refineries, told her, Of all the eligible Sikh men I have identified, Kirpal's pockets are the emptiest, but he has the best character of them all. But he was very upright and very clear thinking. He had a goal in life, which my father thought that he would fulfill. And he really said he will keep you happy. And as I said earlier, that those words mean so much to me because we in another two days time will be completing 60 years of married life. In 1955, Kirpal was asked to escort Nikita Khrushchev and Nikolai Bulganin on a three-week tour of India. Did his wife mind? On the contrary, Manjeet was, has always been, his constant companion and supporter. Whether it was his sister Narinda, his mentor Hilary, or his wife Manjeet, Kirpal drew strength from the women who believed in him. Lesson 5. Honor the women in your life. They are the steady beacons of light that you can turn to when you face the stormy, changing tides of life. His career surged on as Kirpal was appointed to captain the famous aircraft carrier INS Vikrant. Finally, his childhood dream had come true. Even in peacetime, Kirpal was vigilant. As captain, he supervised complex repair operations to ensure the ship would be battle ready. It was this battle readiness that enabled INS Vikrant to play a key role in the 1971 war with Pakistan. And then came an unexpected storm. Not one, but two. In 1973, a few sailors went on a hunger strike on a ship to protest the strict disciplinary action by the captain. In the same year, while trying to rescue a merchant ship in distress off the coast of Porbandar, the captain of another frigate ran the ship aground. Kirpal stepped in to help. As the senior officer, he shouldered the blame for both incidents. He paid a heavy price. Sometimes a leader has to face consequences which may not be of his own making. It happened in my case. I had to face the consequences of my, my chief of naval staff wanting to protect his friends in the Navy and decided that I should be sacrificed. I chose not to fight that and not to resort to legal action, but decided to call it a day as far as the Indian Navy was concerned. On that day, when as a normal as a rear admiral, I would have normally retired. I took my retirement at the age of 51 and a half. I did not know at that time what the future held for me. His life so far 
had not prepared him for setbacks. After trying unsuccessfully to clear his name during the years of the emergency, Kirpal gave up. He decided it was time to leave the Navy and make room for new leaders. But he never forgot his mission, the mission to which he had dedicated his life, helping to build the Indian Navy. Indeed, Kirpal's commitment to his country was far from over. In 1979, he formed Dolphin Offshore to bring pioneering deep-sea technology to Bombay High in partnership with a company based in New Orleans. A naval admiral said, I saw Kirpal go about creating an offshore enterprise even though he had no prior knowledge or expertise of offshore oil exploration, with hard work and his abilities, he made his company's name well known around the world. In 1994, Dolphin Offshore launched a successful IPO with the help of none other than Manjeet, his first officer, his best mate for life. Lesson 6. Be resilient. When all the doors seem closed and you cannot see a clear path ahead, force yourself to rise up again. Through all the dark days, the unfairness and the despair, Manjeet and Kirpal weathered every storm together. So what I learned was that to live in a cruel world affects every person. So to be calm, to be serene, is the order of the day. Married for 60 years, they have emerged with their love for humanity intact, as well as their desire to serve their country and its people. Today, Manjeet and Kirpal provide scholarships for the children of sailors with the Indian Navy. One of their scholarship students wants to be India's first astronaut to walk on the moon. From deep sea to outer space, from the humblest of beginnings to the highest of hopes, from a father's unshakable faith to a son's hard-won future. The tides of time have proven that with resilience, perseverance, and pluck, you can reach for the moon. You can, like Kirpal Singh, be the sea lion. You can find happiness in serving others with dedication and humility, in acting with honor and grace, in remembering those who helped you with gratitude and generosity. You can explore the whole world and achieve the highest goals by making the most of where you are right now, by keeping your eyes set on where you want to go, by understanding that the only code worth living by is honesty. By withstanding oppression, as Kirpal's father did, by overcoming challenges like Kirpal did, you can sail through life like a sea lion. Good luck and God bless. May the story of the sea lion inspire you to be strong and true to your beliefs.